Hi everybody, my name is Ali. If you're new here, hello. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your time hanging out with me. I love and adore you. So, I've been gone for a little bit again. My apologies. I took a couple weeks off for mental health last month-ish. These past two weeks, I think, were a little more unplanned. Um, I had some family health issues going on where I was just busy helping out people and there was issues with COVID and elderly grandparents and yada yada. Just not much time to sit down and record or read even to begin with. Um, this is my April reading wrap up and it is going up a couple days late. I usually put mine up on the first and it's now like the third, I believe. A little bit behind schedule, but hopefully we're getting back up on it and all of the craziness is dying down. Health-wise, people are getting better. So yeah, hopefully normal, everything crazy life. Woo! But it's the end of April. <laughs> it's reading wrap-up time. I did only read eight books this month, so not that much, but for a solid like two weeks of not reading, also not bad between all the family craziness and then just kind of also being in a weird slump. This was not bad, but without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first book that I read this month was on my Kindle. I read The Surfant on The Surfant on the Wings of Night. This I four starred. Liked it. It's it's like if you're an Akatari Sarah J. Mass vibey person, I think that you would like this. I didn't five star it because sometimes I thought the world building was a little bit confusing. So this is like Akatari, but like with vampires instead of Fey. It has the like tournament assassin aspect of a throne of glass. A little bit of like enemies to lovers kind of grumpy sunshine. Basically our main character is the adoptive daughter of like the vampire king basically. And she enters herself into like a champions tournament to try and prove to everyone that she's not just like a weak human because she lives in a world of vampires. All the vampires want to like hurt her because she's human and girl blood. That's how vampires work. Um, <laughs> so she enters this competition trying to just kind of win her honor and respect of everyone where she meets. In my head, I was saying Rain. It's spelled R-A-I-H-N. In my head, I was pronouncing it Rain but it could be like Ryan, I don't know. But in my head, I was pronouncing it rain. Could that be incorrect? Possibly. <laughs> but she meets him in battle and it's an enemies to lovers thing. Are they saving each other because they like each other? Are they saving each other for their own benefit? Yada, yada, yada. It was good. I believe it's the first in two or three series that I might continue reading. I don't know. Sometimes I was a little confused. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep reading it, but if it sounds like something you'd be interested in, SJM but a little bit more vampire-y, feel free to check it out. I did four star it. So then the next book that I read was a book I got from Book of the Month a couple months ago that I hadn't read yet was Adelaide. Romance, but not like happy romance. I would maybe look up trigger warnings for it. It's kind of more, it's not really abusive, but it is like mental health issues that are brought up a lot with this. Um, much more adult and not really like a sappy thing. I think if you're someone that likes like conversations with friends and before we were strangers, that type of thing, I think you might be more into this. It's definitely not just like a happy, goofy love story. It's kind of figuring out like, when is it time to leave a relationship? Are we asking too much from people? What is and isn't enough? Basically, our main character is Adelaide. She is American. She moves to London where she meets a boy, Rory, and they have like the most perfect meet cute. And she thinks that he is the one for her, but he kind of is like, oh, I'm not that super serious. I don't really want a labeled relationship. He ghosts her all the time and crazy. He goes through a loss in the family that Adelaide feels like she needs to help him get through, but he doesn't really open to wanting her help. He doesn't know if he can get over this loss and really be with her. So it's dual point of view. It has both of them. So you kind of get both of their perspectives and it's just kind of an adult way of looking at relationships and what makes them healthy and what makes them not and mental health, how that messes with it. 
all that jazz. So definitely a more serious book. I four-starred it. It did kind of like drag here and there. So it wasn't like some, it wasn't a five-star where I was like, oh my gosh, I can relate to this so much. It's mind-blowing. I did really like it and I thought it made some really good points and stuff, but just wasn't a five-star. But if it sounds interesting to you, check out Trigger Warnings just to be safe. My cats are throwing things, but check out Trigger Warnings just to be safe. Yeah. So then I went back into thrillers and I read Good Girl Blad. I can't, I always say Good Girl Blad Blood every single time. I read Good Girl Bad Blood. This is the second book in the Good Girls. Is it considered a Good Girl? Sequel to Good Girls Got a Murder. There's three books. I guess that's what the whole series is called. I three starred this book. I definitely liked the first book better and it was it's probably been a solid six months between reading the first one and reading this one. And this one was still good. I still liked it, but I just liked the storyline of the first one a little bit better. I will probably still read the last book at some point, but it'll probably honestly be like another six month gap in between the two. The first book follows Ravi and she solves a really old local true crime case. And then this one is she starts a podcast about how she solved the case. At the same time, she is also starting another case trying to solve it. So it's kind of going back and forth between all of that. So sometimes it just kind of timeline was weird and some things felt unnecessary. So I really like the first one better. But overall, it's a really good YA thriller series if you're looking for one. Definitely check it out. So then next I read The Raven Boys by Maggie Stephen Vader. Um, and I three starred this one. This was probably like my biggest disappointment book. Like, it, I still three-starred it and I still liked it, wanted more from this than what it gave. I think that this was just a book where if I read it three or four years ago, I would have been obsessed with it. Like, if I had my hands on this book in middle school, I would have loved it. But just me reading it now, like, it was still good, but I wasn't as into it as I thought I was going to be. Um, and it is more of a paranormal romance, and I'm not the biggest paranormal person. It's not something that I normally gravitate towards. I don't hate it. It's not like a DNF, I will read it, but nine times out of 10 won't be a five star for me. This follows our main character, Blue. Her mom is like a witch basically, and her mom helps like souls pass into the underworld and she can like predict who's gonna die and everything. And basically Blue, while helping her mom do the ceremony, sees the soul of a boy that she like is really drawn to. And he in real life is like this rich boy that she can not associate with because she's the poor girl. And so it's like enemies to lovers in that sense, but then also in like a paranormal aspect. So it was good and I see why a lot of people like it. It just wasn't necessarily my favorite thing in the world, but if you want a good YA paranormal, I do suggest it. So then next I read another book of the month that I was catching up on. I read The Reunion by Kayla Olson. I again three starred this. It was good, but it wasn't anything groundbreaking or new. It wasn't anything special compared to any other romance book. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was a romance book. It's kind of second chance. It follows two childhood co-stars that like played a couple on a TV show and then they meet later down the road and discover that they have real feelings and yeah that's all it is. Kind of a second chance in the spotlight type thing. Another romance book. If you like that sort of thing and you're looking for a romance book, I three starred it. It was okay but check it out if you want. I don't know. It was a romance book. I feel like I've read so many of them Half the times they blend together and most of them don't stick out anymore. But speaking of romance books, one that did p stick out to me is the next Kindle book that I read this month, which was Becoming Selfish by Liz Tom Ford, I believe is how you say her last name. It's the first book in a companion novel series. This is a hockey romance. And this one was so cute. I four starred it. I don't know what about it wasn't a five star. It was really good. I think I really liked this one because it was college set and like graduate college. So the main characters were like 22, 23. They weren't like freshman 18, 19. So it was more my age range. So I related to the characters more and I'm a sucker for hockey romance. 
It was very good. I definitely want to read the second one because the first one kind of leaves on a cliffhanger. I just haven't gotten around to it. Our main boy love interest is Eli. It is his senior year. He is trying to make the NFL team super under a bunch of pressure about that. And his best friend had went abroad over the summer and met their new friend, Logan, who is transferring to their college. So his friend is like, oh, Eli, you, me, and Logan, we're all gonna hang out and be friends, yada, yada. So he's like, cool. He then meets Logan, who he thinks is a boy, is actually a girl. Our main character, our female main lead is Logan. She is a transfer and going through a lot of grief and everything, not really in a place where she trusts Eli because he's the bad boy hockey man with the bad reputation and it's her best friend's half brother. So it's like a brother's best friend thing and enemies to lovers and sports hockey romance, but it was so good. So if you're looking, and it's Kindle Unlimited, so it's free. So if you're looking for a really good free Kindle Unlimited hockey romance, I highly, highly suggest this one. Good smut, very good smut. It was smut with a story, which is my favorite kind of smut. So I definitely recommend it. I then read a book that has been on my TBR since I literally started this channel. I read Onyx and Ivory. And honestly, I can tell why it's been on my TBR for forever. I three-starred it. It wasn't anything special. It didn't exactly stick out to me. It was kind of just another YA fantasy thing. It's another like the outcasts of this society and I need to win this competition. I do have the second book that I might read because I already have it, but if I didn't have it, I don't necessarily know if I would go out and be buying it right away. Who knows, I might not ever read the second one. It might also just sit on my shelf forever. Um, but yeah, I'd restart it. If you're a big fan of the YA outcast win the competition type thing that I think you definitely might like it. But this is just kind of like how the reunion was where I felt like I've already read it four times. So and lastly, my last read of the month was Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. I've had this book forever and it has taken me forever to read it, which is surprising because the Dark Olympus series is one of my favorite series. This is the third book. I believe there's four out now. There might potentially be five. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but this is another one that's been on my TBR forever. I'm surprised it took me this long to read it. This one I three starred. This one is probably my least favorite out of the two. I think if I had to put them in order, I think I liked Electric Idol, Neon Gods, and then Wicked Beauty. This one was cool because it was like a reverse harem type thing. This one followed Achilles, Patroclus, and Helen. So if you know like their, their Greek story, it follows them. I will say I love the illustration that's in the front of this. Very nice. I don't think the other books have this. And the whole Dark Olympus series, it's a smut series. The grade A smut in all three. But this one was the most smut, smut without plot. And that's why I think I liked it least. I love a good smut book, but I need to have the plot with it. And this one just kind of had the most not their plot for me. But if you're looking for a really good Greek retelling series that isn't just Hades and Persephone, I definitely suggest this one. Yeah, these are the eight books that I read for the month of April. I'm really hoping to start off May on a high note and get back. I think I'm like 14 books behind on my reading goal, which I mean is fixable, but also that's a lot of books to be behind. <laughs> I'm really hoping that this month is much calmer and I can get out of this weird reading slump that I've been in for the past couple months. I'm gonna go get some new books and try some new genres and hopefully find something that sticks a little bit better. Hopefully get back into some more series. This is everything I read in April. Thank you guys for sticking with me for the probably I think four uploads now that I've missed. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for still being here and still subscribing and commenting. And I'm excited to be back and hopefully back on a normal schedule. But yeah, if you want to follow me anywhere on social media to keep up with what the heck's going on with my life, they are down in the description box and on my end card screen. Down below is my Amazon and my Pango. If you want to send me any books that are on my wish list or secondhand any of my books or anyone else's, if any of these sound interesting to you, you might not have to pay a form full price. I'm not skipping out on you. I will be there and I love you and I appreciate you. And I will see you somewhere else on the internet, but especially next week. Goodbye.